Barely 24 hours to his inauguration, David Leon of the All Progressives Congress, APC, as governor-elect by Oslo State, has been sacked by the Supreme Court. And community policing is definitely not passing the Southeast. Bayonese Indigo have called on the federal government to allow the Southeast to establish their own security outfit to be known as Operation Obinigui. This is Plus Politics, and I am Benny Ark. The Supreme Court on Thursday sacked David Leon of the All Progressives Congress, APC, as the governor-elect of Biosa State, barely 24 hours to his inauguration. A five-member panel of the APS Court, led by Justice Mary O'Dilly, nullified the election on the grounds that his deputy presented false information to the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, for the November 16th governorship election in the state. Joining me to discuss this this evening, it's Sam Adeleke, a political analyst. Good evening, Sam. Good evening. And thank you for joining us. My pleasure. Now, barely 24 hours to its inauguration, this annulment comes. What is your reaction to this? It's a shocker to everyone. Yeah. Since um, afternoon when the news broke, social media has been agog. Everyone has been wondering. People have been, you know, giving out different kinds of memes, saying that um, the God of almost there may you not be your portion when you're about to, you know, sentimental and emotional talks all around the place. Yeah. But let's look at this more objectively. Um, why was this election overturned and why did the Supreme Court give that judgment? Simply because the deputy governor presented fake documents. Yeah. Now, this is a criminal offense, so to speak. And the question that we should be asking, the question we should be asking is this, who were the screening committee in the APC that allowed this to pass through? Mm -hmm. And you know, all this happened all the way. And also, why did the Supreme Court also wait to fix the judgments on the day before the election? Because a lot of money will have been spent. Yeah. Even the man went for the rehearsal today. People are saying that's before what before his inauguration. You know, before the inauguration. Yeah. You know, well, people like, people are saying that what will happen to the money that was used to rent um, um, equipment to slaughter cows and all that. The 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 toll, the economic toll of this uh, judgment alone is is enough to make everyone sober. That this is not just about, and of course, political um, pundits kept saying that oh. Is, is the Supreme Court trying? The Supreme Court's trying to give um, compensate the PDP for what they did in Imo, you know? And people are saying that no, no, these are two different things entirely. Let, let, let's look at this without being um, emotional about it. It's what is wrong is wrong, mm. and if we look deeply across the political landscape, there are many officers who are brandishing and who are currently leading us, so to speak, with fake and not original documents. So this is a wake-up call to every person out there that see, the Supreme Court is not a court that is predictable anymore. And I think it's good for the system. Even though we have had shockers in the past few months, I think this upsets will make everyone sit up and like, okay, you don't just um, go by the Godfather um, choice anymore. It is, it is let, let's be objective. Well, some of us have speculated that um, the hand that pulled a string is, might have been involved in these, and mm -hmm. the hand that pulled a string here, yeah, they're referring to Wiki, that it seems to have um, strong backings when it comes to, to the judiciary over there in, in, in the South. Would you, would you want to subscribe to that? Well, well to, to be honest, we can't um, remove politics from everything because yeah. we are political animals, and there are judgments and implications and the uh, bigger picture. Because even during Wiki's tenure and, and when his own court judgment was going to be struck then, there were, there were news and rumors around town that, you know, um, that he went to beg um, the Peter Odili, the husband to Mary Odili, yeah. the lead justice in this five-man panel. You know, so news have been flying around that this has political and judicial understanding. But, but to be honest, we cannot separate these things. And unfortunately, the Supreme Court is, a, is, is the most senior court. So there is no one that you can appeal to right appeal now. To. It is what it is. Now, I'm concerned the grounds, the reason given for the grounds while he was sacked right. is deputy. I mean, hmm. then people beg to ask the question, why then not prosecute the deputy? Because it, it's tantamount to forgery. Why should, because he met every criteria and he was, he was, he was governor-elect, why not prosecute the deputy? Why the governor? You know, it's, it's a joint ticket. And but looking at it politically <laughs> and legally, is this correct? Well... I'm sure legal pundits would definitely agree with the fact that what the Supreme Court did was based on evidence. Uh, because, of course, the... On his the, deputy. 
on, on his deputy. And he because, probably was not privy to it. But, but then, but then the, the, the voters didn't just elect Leon. It was the, the, PD, the APC was elected. You know, so whatever um, judgment or whatever implication of someone's action would definitely you know, um, can cause ripple effect on the party as a whole. So it, it was, it was, it was, it was something. It was a sin that someone had to pay for the party. You know, someone's error. So and, I, and, I yet, think, and then po politically, do you think this is correct? Because this is a precedent now being set. It is. It yeah. is. Like like I said earlier, every police, even even Tolu Ogunle, the SSA to the president of digital media, tweeted that every political party should sit up, and this is a wake up call for them to take more time to scrutinize every document presented by the candidates so that they will not get this or face this embarrassment at such critical time or juncture in the, in, in, in the political process. And now joining us now on the phone is a politician, Asu Ikie. Good evening to you, Asu. How are you doing? Good evening. Fine, thank you. Thank you for joining us on Plus Politics. Yes, uh, how are you doing? Now, I want to let me have your two cents, Asu Ikie, on, on the situation the sacking of the governor of Biosa State. What is your reaction to this development? Well, for your, for, for your information, the governor was not sacked. It was the governor-elect the governor -elect, that yes. was sacked. Hmm. He had not been inaugurated, which was supposed to be tomorrow. Yes. And uh, he was sacked. And my, my take on it is, is very simple. Um, every one of them are Biosa. The governor-elect is a biasa, uh, the one we see this morning is also a biasa. We believe that the best person should be given opportunity to start the state. And under that circumstances, I, I believe that it was proper for the proper procedures um, when it has to do with um, uh, the laws of the land are followed in, uh, in getting the person who becomes the governor. So uh, PDP had a very strong case, and that strong case is what they pursued to the Supreme Court, and that verdict came. Although it came when we had all given up, but today the city of Yanagoa is in jubilant mode because the the law has taken its course in our political dispensation, and I think we are very very excited about it. All right, people have argued the fact that the deputy should have been prosecuted because he was the one with the, the falsification of documents and not the, the governor-elect. What do you yeah. say to this? Well, it all boils down to how laws are enforced in Nigeria. I, I believe that when a state is not called a state, you are about to see things like this. Why do we tamper with the law when it is very clear? Why do we use positions to... To, to alter the, the legal procedures when it's supposed to be very clear. This case should have been settled before the Supreme Court, but because we were not fully, uh, our, our laws were not properly uh, legislated, we have that kind of scenario. And I think that this is a very clear case in point where people who have broken and shut of the law should have been dealt with before a particular time and they were not dealt with. And so today, uh, the Supreme Court has given us uh, the answer. Like you rightly said, the Supreme Court has given its, its ruling, but do you think this represents the, the, the will and, and goodwill of the people of Bielsa? Does it sit well with the people of Bielsa as it, 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 it is difficult to sit at a vantage point and consider a court decision as the will of everybody. Now, there are two sides to a decision. There are those who are on the receiving side of every um, uh, verdict of our Supreme Court, I think. So it's not going to go down with everybody. Everybody will not be excited. But I think that PDP is at the upper hand of excitement today. And um, we just want to see everybody happy. And we hope that the, the incoming governor will learn from the past and impact the state the way we expect from him. Okay, before I let you go, I'll switch here. Just one more question. Now, do you see any situation coming up in Biosa security-wise? Do you see protests on the street? Do you think this might lead to protests on the street anytime soon? Because we have people who will be aggrieved by this decision, by this verdict of the Supreme Court, it will not be unexpected to have people protesting one way or the other. But I think that uh, the city is in jubilant mood. Um, all over the place, people are on the street rejoicing. And I think that that's what I expect to be uh, the flow of events 
from tomorrow. Uh, but you can never predict uh, what the possibility that lies behind the minds of people. So, Asriki, thank you very much for joining us and for your contributions. Thank you so much. Now, it's, it's amazing that the grounds given is the falsification of documents by the deputy. Not one would have expected for this to have happened. It could have been be irregularities, you know, widely spread during the election. But none of this was the case here because given the results, the government-elect actually won. It did. In the major places was meant to win. You know, uh, my, my worry in this entire scenario was what the high court that sat on this um, judicial, on this um, election tribunal, why didn't they spot that before, yeah. before it's even moved to the Supreme Court? So it, it simply shows that there has been some, some, some gaps and holes in the, in the system. And I think the Nigeria, National Judicial Commission should um, call to question and query the judges at the High Court who missed that significant. Because if we do not um, respect institutions, we do not respect certificates, because certificates are what people go to school to read and study for. You know, this is what it's called dignity of labor. It's, it, 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 these are signposts that make um, a, a country what it is. So I, I think this is a very judicial, uh, very, very significant and iconic judgment that will send Shiva's spine the entire political system so that when people are fielding candidates, there'll be candidates that truly, truly present what is right and dignity and, 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 and shame will be restored back to the system. Yeah, I mean, on what is fair and, and, and on the grounds of equity and fairness, hmm. um, do you think this is justice done to, to the governor-elect? Uh, to be honest, all, all, all is fair in love and, and war. This is, it's, it's a game of, 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 of who wins and who, and who gets power at the end of the day. But just like Asuki has said, if truly the, the purpose of power is to serve, then it should not be a thing of do or die. Now, the, the new person who's going to be sworn in tomorrow now um, will come in. The, 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 he has the burden of service because you have just been trumped up at the last minute when you didn't even expect it. You know? So I, I think he, he will approach this next four years with humility and, and sobriety so that the, 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 the judges who awarded him this judgment and who spotted that gaping hole we know that he has to do the right this, thing. This is quite a different case from what happened in Imoste between right. Uzo Dima and Hope Uzo Dima and Emeka here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there, there is, there's no grounds for this. For that, it was clearly seen what happened. I mean, um, the votes, votes that were counted, votes that were not counted. Not counted. You know, at the end of the day, I mean, in weeks to come, unfortunately, hmm. um, like you at least the one you were talking earlier on, he can appeal this because this was a decision, this was a ruling passed by, by the Supreme Court. <laughs> what, are his, what are his chances in any way in this situation? Ooh, his chances are very slim. It's just like, I think he will have to just give a concession speech, just like the um, former governor of, um, of Imo State did. And, and, and fortunately for him, he has not even been sworn in yet. So we can't even say he's a former governor. He, he, there's nothing like a former governor-elect, you know. But, but in the case of Imo, where he won, and it was removed. Right now, people are saying that this is not just because people actually voted overwhelmingly yes. for the APC candidates, and that the people, the the, the, the person who was not voted for, who people didn't like, is not the one there. You know, so I, I think you know the, the, the way the political system works. There will also be cross carpeting, I believe, in the next few weeks. Oh, yes. People will move, and alliances will will shift. So I, I think. It's just politicians or just remain politicians. And, and who knows, two of them might even go to the beer parlor tonight and talk and, and, and strike a deal. You, you did you know? say, I mean, this people went out and voted for him. This right. was the people. Right. They, they, this was the person the people wanted and they voted mm. for him. Mm. And I, I did ask Asui Kia, does this represent the will and desire of the people to buy Elsa? It's clear it's, I mean, <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't. Because democracy is a government of the people for the people and by the people. It's, it's about a game, game of numbers. It's about those or the person that carries the day. Now, this person carried the day, but then a technicality, which is major, made him lose his mandate. So, unfortunately, the people of Bayosa have to, you know, tolerate this new government. And, of course, just like Asuki has said, who is on ground, a jubilation across Bayosa. Let's hope that this jubilation also makes that the party, PDP, accountable and sober with this new mandate that got in Now, this shows a lot of gray areas and holes that needs to be tackled by electoral system yes. and also the judiciary. I mean, it's, it's not the first we're seeing situations like this. I mean, what are they missing out on? The judicial system and 
the, the, the electoral, uh, the, the, the call for electoral reform of, over the years and is still a clamor. What is pertinent for us at this point in time? in view of 2023, so to avoid situations like this from reoccurring. You know, where there is no consequence, impunity will reign. And if the judiciary does not sanitize its rank and file, we will keep going through the same cycle. Because to be honest, it's not so much about laws. Even though the president and this president has as, as not lived up to expectation as someone of integrity and someone who will bring true change, because the the amendments that be proposed, this is the fifth year. Yes. This man should have signed, and this man should have made significant and bold moves. So if that has not been done, then let's look at the people who are, who are to execute, the N NJC, the rank and file, to ensure that the people who are um, manning and who are presiding over these cases are people of integrity, people who will not be linked with politicians who are questionable, so that people will not have the grounds to say, oh, it is because we care and orderly, it is because this and that. That should not be the basis for people. People should say, oh, okay, judicial system, judiciary is sacred, the sense of, of rule of law, these, these men are incorruptible. That should be what the NJC should be looking at going forward. And also, the, the INEC, because apparently... This, this is an indictment on yes, our electoral it, process. It is, it is, because why didn't their lawyers and also their screening process ensure that whatever certificate that they submitted, and even at the submission, the primaries level, because INEC is usually involved in the names of those who are some names of party candidates. They should have screened this and flagged this from that point. Why waiting until this die minute? So I think it's important that the ench men and the key men in these institutions take the bold step to ensure that they, they leave a good legacy, legacy of integrity, legacy of transparency, accountability. So the system is not just thrown upside down at such a significant People are saying, why, why are they just finding this now? Mm. Why are they just finding this out now? And that's why they said the hand that pulled the string mm. could have been involved in right. this, that it's beyond um, what has been given as a reason. <laughs> you know, and we, we know the, 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 the Godfatherism um, figure right. they still plays in our politics. It does. You know, and so how do we resolve this kind of situation to ensure they don't happen again? Whew, that's, a, <laughs> that, that, that's an interesting question. God for that reason, will never cease as long as the earth remains. It, it will only be tempered. Only if, if and only if we have a responsible and proactive citizenry that will continuously damn the consequences. If we have more Agba Jalingos, more showers, more people who will, who will not be beholden to the powers that be. Because apparently, these are, are, are men who have entrenched interests, men and women in this policy, who have been there for, for years, but people who just come every four years, you know, periodical and seasonal politicians, yeah. they, they can make a change. So I think people should start getting interested in the political process and, not, and move from online to offline and start marching the streets, gathering momentum, gathering consensus, start planning and building momentum towards the big day. I think that will, that, 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 that will result in a lasting change. If not, we'll keep in this, uh, we'll keep talking about this Godfatherism too. Sam Adeliki, thank you very you. much for your contributions. Thank you. And thank you for staying with us. We'll take a short break now. And when we return, the South East catches the community policing morgue. Do stay with us.